Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Let's say you were walking down a school hallway and saw an unattended bucket of liquid nitrogen. You decide to stick your hand inside and it quickly freezes up, unable to move. But why? Not like, why did you stick your hand in an unattended bucket of liquid nitrogen, but what's going on at the atomic level? Well, first off, we have to define what it means to move. The particles that make up your hand or any matter can vibrate, rotate, and translate. However, their phase will restrict some of that motion. For example, the molecules making up the air we breathe can move in all three ways, but the molecules making up my rock and block body are only free to vibrate. This is because of intermolecular forces. See, if we zoom in enough, we can see that the atoms and molecules in my body are pretty well ordered. Besides their fantastic sense of humor and personality, they are attracted to each other because of their electric charge, which is what makes solids have such a defined structure. Let's take water as an example. Each hydrogen is called valently bonded to the oxygen, but electrons are not shared equally. The oxygen is very electronegative, meaning that it wants the electrons closer to it. This makes the hydrogen slightly positive and the oxygen slightly negative. As we learned in grade school, opposites attract, so when one water molecule comes closer to another, they will line up so that the positive hydrogens are next to the negative oxygen. And if the temperature is low enough, these molecules will form a solid crystalline lattice also known as ice. But what about something like helium, where it's just one atom? Believe it or not, it too has intermolecular forces. Helium has two electrons around it, and for the most part, they are on opposite sides of the atom. But if the electrons were to be both on one side, that side will temporarily be more negative than the other. And just like the water molecules, they will line up accordingly. So the main difference between gases, liquids, and solids is the extent of these forces. When something is in its gas or liquid phase, the molecules are moving fast enough that they are not affected by the electric forces that much. But as soon as the temperature drops to the freezing point, these bond-like forces can take over, restricting the motion of the molecules. So how does this all relate to your hand in the liquid nitrogen? As your hand is exposed to the intensely cold temperature, ice crystals will form in the spaces between cells. Remember, your body is anywhere between 50 to 75 percent water, and that's a lot that can freeze. Your blood vessels will also constrict, lowering blood flow to the hand and consequently decreasing the amount of oxygen that reaches the cells. And the combination of these effects can cause irreversible damage. So the key to restricting an object's motion is to change its molecular structure. And that all sounds pretty complicated, but all you need is a freezer. You know what I'm saying? Ice cubes. No, not that ice cube this ice cube. Make sure you come back every Monday for a brand new video. And if you want even more Life Noggin, check out this video we did on why we get nosebleeds and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. As always, my name is Blacko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.